Welcome. Today we're going to talk about a simple but very important circuit structure, the comparator, and more precisely about clocked or latched comparators. These are needed in microelectronics for accurately comparing two voltages and making definite decisions at a certain point in time. We are going to develop such a clocked comparator step by step, starting from a simple latch and subsequently adding more circuit parts. Let us first refresh our knowledge on normal comparators. The symbol of a comparator is the same as for operational amplifiers, as they share some similarities. Most importantly, it's high open loop gain. However, as comparators are usually operated in open loop, they have more relaxed conditions in terms of stability, as there is no feedback loop involved. But they need to be fast in terms of delay times. Furthermore, the output of a comparator should reach defined low and high states. Let us have a look at the DC characteristic of such a comparator. We will plot the output voltage with respect to the input voltage. Additionally, we have a reference voltage that acts as a threshold, defining the exact point when the output should switch from low to high. This would give the following characteristic. However, as nothing is ideal, also the real characteristic of a comparator will look slightly different. In fact, it will look like this. The steepness is roughly defined by the open loop gain of the comparator. The higher the open loop gain, the steeper the curve. Nevertheless, we are still left with a range that we will call delta V in, where the input voltage is not clearly mapped to either a high or a low output level. In some applications, we need the output signal to appear at a specific point in time, as this is the case in clock digital logics. Therefore, we will introduce so-called clock comparators, where the main focus lies on doing a decision at a certain point in time, after which the output voltage must definitely be either high or low. We will develop such a clocked comparator in the course of the video, but first we need to start with something simpler, namely a latch. A simple latch can be built with two transistors and two resistors, whereas the transistors are cross-coupled. Now let us first assume that the transistors and the resistors are the same, so both branches are exactly equal. This also leads to the voltages and currents in the branches being equal. The outputs are denoted as Vout1 and Vout2. However, now we can examine what happens if one voltage changes slightly. Let us assume that V out 1 increases, then the gate source voltage of transistor 2 increases too, leading to a higher current I2 and to a higher voltage of a resistor R2. As the supply voltage is constant, voltage V out 2 decreases, which leads to a decrease in gate source voltage of transistor 1 and therefore to a lower current I1 and a lower voltage over resistor R1. This again leads to an increase of voltage V out 1. What we have just shown is a positive feedback loop, meaning if we perform a small action in one branch, this action is amplified further. Finally, the latch will flip and fall either to one side or to the other, due to the cross-coupled transistor pair we can conclude that the circuit has three equilibrium points, whereas the center point is not stable. You can compare it with a seesaw. A seesaw also has three equilibrium points, whereas the balanced point is instable. As soon as there is a small disturbance, let us say it's windy, 
the seesaw will fall into one of the other stable equilibrium points. The next question we can ask ourselves is, how do we bring the input and reference voltage into this latch? One simple approach would be to replace the two resistors with two transistors and setting the gates to either the input or reference voltage. Now we have the possibility to create a difference in the two branches and to make the latch flip. Until now, we assumed that we always started at the instable equilibrium point and waited for the latch to fall into one of the stable equilibria. Assuming the latch is already flipped, we want to make it flip or let's call it flop into the other state. We cannot reliably flop or switch it back only by changing V in. For this reason, we need to implement a reset mechanism to put the circuit back into the unstable equilibrium point. This is done by adding a switch in between the two voltage nodes. In our case, by adding a simple NMOS transistor. To drive the switch, we can use a clock signal. Whenever the signal is high, the latch is in the reset phase and as soon as the clock goes to low, the switch is opened and the latch starts to flip or to flop. To assure that no static current is flowing after the decision was made, we can extend our latch with another cross-coupled transistor pair using PMOS transistors. Furthermore, we need to add switches in series to the PMOS input transistors. We can also change the input transistors to be NMOS transistors without limitations in function. Now let us try to redraw or to restructure some things. This PMOS NMOS circuit looks like a CMOS inverter with input node 1 and output node 2. The same is true for the other branch with inverted input and output nodes. What we get is simply two inverters that are connected as a D-latch with some additional clock and reset circuitry. In this video we have developed a so-called clocked or latch comparator by starting with a simple latch and extending it with clocking and input circuitry. There are two clock phases the circuit can be in. The first phase, when the two inverter outputs are shorted, can be seen as phase of reset and gaining information. Whereas the second phase is the decision phase. The comparator was additionally designed to consume no static current in the second phase. Of course, this simple circuit can be extended to satisfy even more requirements. But we will leave it as that for now. I'm Dominic with the Institute of Electronics. We hope you have learned something today. But anyway, thanks for watching.